We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. James sequence! Dun 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 dun. Nah, everyone's riding chicken. Oh man, that hurts my eyes. You wake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decisions on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about in some jurisdictions. Isn't even illegal. But if the recipe is a secret, how will they know? Your thoughts are inter interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated black breakfast and your mouth waters at the sight of it. He has a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. <laughs> Biscuits and uh, chicken. You taste Colonel Sanders' food and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. Really? So, would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Such confidence, er, such confidence, such grace. Could it be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Ah, flatter him. You know, I think you might make a great team. A single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the windows. And with the right business partner, with the right business partner, I know it can't fail. Business partner, can we talk to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're in the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and go home. There's still one more day of school, after all. The University of Cooking School Acad Academy for Learning waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? I... Because I had one heck of a night! Did you unrobo friend? Hit it off? I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something had happened to you. It's okay. I was just... But now that it turns out, you're fine. I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Sure, but... You will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. I think I can believe that. Since I'd been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him you better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure, I can get to know a little metallic guy. She's holding her arms out like a chicken in the poster, right? <laughs> Is that an army poster on the wall? This one? I don't think so. I don't know, it's just a bunch of people. I'm oh, sorry, Short. He took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. Did she just say skydiving as if that's the typical first date to go on of talking? With a talking pressure cooker? <laughs> no, I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story, however. Bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a day two, back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. Bow, bow, he gave me some of his chicken and drumstick, you know what I mean. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection... Wowzers. Miriam offers support you no matter what. Together with your bestie, you feel like you can do anything. It's clearly a pop band, yeah. You got excited? <laughs> when you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the squad. You can tell them, you can tell from a distance that they're picking on pop. Though he himself might not quite grasp the fact of it. Because you know, he's pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious! Oh, it's great! I'll order you one up right away! Uh, I'll have a swirly with sprinkles, please! Uh, uh, sprinkles is a dog and a treat! Uh, you can get your swirly dip too. 
Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Because I'm literally the bigger, the biggest person at the school. There is that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school. Oh, who would dare pick on such a dental and beautiful creature? You've got some nerve, Big Papa, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Uh, now you're twisting my words, and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday makes your accident, accident makes you wince with pain. Doesn't look like you could go on a cooking like that. Might as well just give up. Did his shoulders bounce? Like he was laughing at me? Am I imagining that? I thought he went... <laughs> I'll never give up. Ever! Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are going to boil close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Big Papa, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. Uh -huh. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided. But your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? Mm. What about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of the words to say it was a bland. Oh, damn. Excuse me, Big Papa. I'm more than capable enough to speak for myself. Oh, <sighs> damn. Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the finals of fine food. See you inside, Big Papa. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from the hot, how slight did you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, what's that book? It looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I can think of one sure if I wanted to find out. You open to a page covered with arcane warnings, cast only in case of extreme emergency. It says around the edges of the page. I could use a spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. Man, I am dramatic as fuck. This is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else? Like, anything else. Not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine. It is drastic. But desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell, writing to sitting, right in front of you, and a pretty good excuse to try it out. Don't do it. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room, awaiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know I feel something a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry. Reach out for some old homework. Give him a snack. Dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially when goes like to see what happens. So he's sniffing something. Ah, uh, let's see what happens. Sprinkle stops in his tracks. He focuses in on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. <laughs> what? This is crazy. Ter Terrence! I told you never to come back here, Terrence! I will destroy you, Terrence! The squirrel's name is Terrence. Sprinkles, maybe I should have distracted him with the food. Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying off his face. The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? You better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again! I 
Dr. Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been made felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in the hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. Or professorial tone, I guess. Ahem. <coughs> I apologize for the outburst. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Big Papa, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, but before we can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by words and sparks coming from the back of the room. Are they hooking up in the back of the room? I told you to save it for after class. <laughs> you think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing. They still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. <laughs> but no, you had to show off your cool friend. You had, to, you had to show off to your cool kid. Oh my god. You had to show off to your cool kid friend Jeff and Joan. JJ forever. Watch us form a triangle in mid air as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Bzz, bzz. Yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. Me. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands and pedal down the mountain or off to a cliff all I care. Man, why is such drama? Sad beep. <laughs> Link begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Beep! Bzz. Oh no, you broke him! No amount of seasoning is going to make up, make me want to eat that, Clank. <laughs> Clank burps out a completely hey, deep-fried no. sneaker. Yeah. Oh my god, all the flashy bits. Dora is super cute, though. How's it going, Birch? And with the 25 bitties. How are you doing, my friend? Welcome, welcome, welcome. He, he puked out a, a deep-fried sneaker. It looks delicious. It looks like a, a McNugget. He's taking photos, bitties, and it's just bitties. Nom, 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 nom. That boy wearing sound is driving me nuts, though. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it's not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. Clank slowly rolls out of the room to get blown with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pal pal over the final day of school. Well, that was un unfortunate. Well, we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all at But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? Uh. Oh, I'm so mad. I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke. Even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're going to cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to success city. Fist bump. Just got off work. Was work okay? Can I get some relaxed time in now? Mir brightens up, imagining the wind rustling through her short, short bangs, but she's hesitating to embrace the feeling of all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset? I accidentally clicked too soon, so I don't know what you actually said. Of course not. Well, maybe, sort of, but, but uh, I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a big ranch, or a ranch big enough for both of us and whoever we want to bring along. <laughs> If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the rest, for the first someone to show you a little interest anyway. Great advice, by the way. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I, I, I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. Heck yeah. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. While you were pep talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch. But that's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. 
You've decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it. The location of your final challenge. A test of will. A test of courage. A test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants off of Ban Ban, the supposed man man, and his evil or counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of recipe you've been working on. Big Papa's famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cramp session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Big Papa, what are you doing here? There's still time before the exam. Uh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm, uh, I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. Oh, you can do some homework. Oh no. Throw on some game grumps and listen to some shows, or listen to some shows. Do some homeworks. The the pot pie begins to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Hmm. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were cooking something delicious. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who's hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. <laughs> Ignore it like there's no sign at all. Fess up about your practice dish. Um, I'm gonna ignore it like that sound. No, it'll burn. All right, I think I'm gonna fess up. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My nose can smell a pop high from 400 yards. Oh yeah, hang out. Feel free. Hang out. Do some homeworks. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was a pot pie from just the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie. With an all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? Ha, <laughs> no. I can smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. The long... Censored. But it'll probably stop burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow. It's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. Yeah, that's right. He tasted my pot pie. I've always loved country cooking and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. Oh, snap. There are no rules. That is, except for cook with everything you've got. I can take someone out. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes for their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big. <laughs> to go big going small. Colonel Sanders is be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. It's an original recipe, fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare the food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken and says it levitates through the air. Egg, oh wait, egg wash. Miri fiercely injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. <laughs> Best friend, Master Blaster! Uh. A Baster Blaster? Is this just all euphemisms? No, that would be Batter Blaster. Yeah, good thing they didn't say Batter Blaster. That would be, uh. That would definitely be a euphemism. Bad Ben flexes pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and ride! Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightweight lightning speed. Shallow, 
<laughs> Shallow personality spatula. Even Clank gets into it. Oh, he actually spoke. <laughs> 